Everybody, welcome back. Falcon, Death State. Let's get the game going on over here. So, uh, last episode we finished off the first mission, which was um, to get the parts needed to restore the fence, which we did grab. And we also did an extra side quest, which was um, loot the diner. And we got some pretty good stuff out of it because we got a crowbar. The crowbar led us to get the sledgehammer, and now we have a sledgehammer. And a baseball bat as well, because we did fight a human person, which was a looter. So, if you haven't checked that out yet, I encourage you to check out this uh, third episode. To find out what that's all about. <clears throat> For now, we have to actually finish our day, quote unquote, and actually get that fence up and running. So I was going to talk to this lady just to see if I could do anything. Yeah, this is the same thing. Alrighty. I think who we need to talk to is really Davis to set up the, um, <clears throat> what I like to call the, the jobs. There's a job system in the game that people do around the shelter whenever um, there's downtime. <clears throat> or whenever you're out on journeys and they're not doing anything else. So for now, we'll talk to Davis. And again, I'll try to keep doing the voices. How can I help? Um, anything that would improve your mood? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, let's ask him a question. Of course. Where am I? Actually, you know what? This isn't gonna trigger anything, right? No, no. I think what I need to do is actually fall asleep, and then the next morning you do the whole jobs thing, if I'm right. That's how it was the last time, I want to say. Uh, let me check out the radio before we do anything else, though. <clears throat> <clears throat> can I do my radio voice here? I'm not sure if I can do this one. If you're just joining us, you'll listen to Lane on the Fast Lane here on KHEK, entering its eighth day of broadcast, bringing you the latest news and freshest sounds of what might be the end of the world. Earlier, we heard Squirrel Jelly with someone left in the light on, and before that, we heard the sounds of me eating a protein bar. Mmm, yum. Uh, now on a serious business, I just got a report of the emergency systems. This is very important. Pay very close attention to this. This is a bulletin straight from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and you know me, I'm not a serious guy, but this just might save your life. According to this, um, wait, let me just read this part. Antibiotics taken daily will control, but not cure the infection. Infected individuals that take daily doses of antibiotics would not show any symptoms, not progression of the disease. So if you're listening to me, and you know how to get antibiotics, I highly advise you keep a stash on hand for emergencies, it just might save your life, I repeat. And the DJ continues to report the same announcement. <laughs> Alrighty, <clears throat> that was my DJ voice. A little bit harder to do there, but... <clears throat> trying to do this as much as possible. My throat's really been jacking. I'm not sure if I'm... <clears throat> I was gonna say my throat's been jacking up, not jacking off. Uh, I need to go upstairs to get some sleep, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, my throat's been kind of a little bit weird. I'm not sick anymore. I was sick a few days, like almost a week ago. My girlfriend got sick, though, so I'm not sure if, you know, some sort of... Um, there's some sort of thing happening there where now she's getting me sick again? I'm not sure. I hope that's not the case. My throat's just a bit weird. Uh, let me talk to Elaine over here. We haven't talked to her before. Uh, there's- we can't even take her out to parties and whatnot. Or <laughs> by parties, I don't say even like fucking a party, like drinking and shit. I mean, we can't recruit her to parties for missions. It's all my fault, crying. What's your fault? I, I can't. She starts to cry again. I need your help. What's wrong with you? Snap out of it. Don't see. Don't you see? We need everybody we can here. And I'll come back later. Let me just be realistic about this. Snap out of it. She's just crying. Whatever I'm going. So we can't do much with her. Fuck you, Elaine. So we're done here. Let's actually just go and um, sleep. And this will start off the next day, which is when we could do um, jobs and hopefully get the fence up and running. So, yes. We will end our day. Here we go. We got some food gained. Uh, today's fresh food gain is 2, and today's preserved food gain is 51. The fresh food is stuff that obviously is gonna rot over time, and then the preserved food are things like chips and, you know, things that last a bit longer. We also have food consumed, so today we consumed 18 food, so we'll keep that in mind. Um, fresh food spoiled, none. Uh, morale bonuses, we have, um, morale gained from luxury items, 83. Ally negotiation skill bonus is 13. Uh, likable characters, 5. Put found, uh, parts found bonus is 20. And working... Working toilets bonus 5, so we also have to keep the toilets working apparently, which makes sense, you know, you don't want to go into the restroom and there's like a big pile of shit right there. Which, you know, brings me to public toilets, there's a reason why I don't use public toilets, unless I really have to, and when I use them I only urinate, because, you know, I don't do anything besides urinate in public toilets, because, you know, let's just be honest here, people are fucking nasty sometimes, man. Uh, morale penalties, allies with good mood, 2. Um, so we took some, um, morale penalties here. Content allies 2, negative 6. Unhappy allies 1, negative 7. That's probably what's her face, who doesn't do shit. No electricity, negative 20. And fence broken, negative 20. So our current morale is 71. And days without antibiotics, well, we don't need any right now. This will tell you about how important the morale system is. Uh, we could pretty much assume that it's really important. 
<clears throat> Anita is one of the ones that wasn't happy, and that's because we took her daughter out in a mission instead. But you know what, Anita? It's uh for the benefit of everybody involved, okay? <clears throat> Apologies for the throat clearing there. Hey, I told you, I don't want Renee going out there. Do you understand me? I don't care if she wants to help or not. I'm not going to stand by while she while she's put in danger like that. I won't be doing the female voices just because it requires me to talk really, really high. And then that really hurts me, so <laughs> I won't do those. I'll bring her home safe, I promise. She's a medic. If we don't bring her, we risk everyone's lives. I'll keep her here today, but you have to go in her place. We won't survive. If we all hide in here, the truth is I need her help, everyone's help. Let's go with number four. <clears throat> I know that. That doesn't make it any easier. If she goes with you, you better pray you get her home. Anita walks off before you can say anything else. So, right there alone, it's making me think that if she does die, we're gonna have a lot of issues with Anita. <clears throat> Not that I wanna kill Renee because she's our medic and, you know, I wanna keep her alive for that reason. <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna do Davis voice again. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. We should begin repairing the fence today. Do you have the supplies? Uh, yes, we found everything we need. Great, we should get the task assigned to some people here. I put up a task board in the cafeteria. You should assign people two jobs so they, that they know what they should be doing. I'll make sure we keep track of everyone's progress so we can manage this place efficiently. For now, you should assign some people to repair the fence since we have the necessary components. It is not a very complicated task, so anyone should be up to it. If we're going to fix this place up and hold out there, we're going to need some more parts, foods, and probably weapons. I know it's dangerous, but someone's going to have to go out and look for supplies. We'll only be able to work during daylight hours, so keep that in mind. The fence is our top priority. If anything happens to it, everyone here is at risk. As long as we keep it up, people don't worry about it. Yeah, you're telling me. Anytime I keep it up, nobody worries about it. <laughs> eh, whatever. Uh, all right, understood. I'll go take a look at the task board. Let's hope that they know how to follow directions. Yeah, let me go look at the task board. Also, if you have any spare parts left, you may want to try and get that abandoned well and the property operational again. A source of fresh water could definitely help boost morale around here. Good idea. I'll look into it. Alrighty, so the job board is um, something that I'll to explain to you instead of the game here. So the job board is what I mentioned, I think, either last episode or maybe earlier. This episode, I already forgot. I terrible. Um, memory here. But it's basically a board where you assign people to do certain jobs. One of the first things we have to do is actually get the fence up and running. <clears throat> so let me do the radio thing here again. And once again, antibiotics, very important, no hoarding please. Some, hopefully you're still listening to Kak -kak 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 -kak, your source for weather, news and music that I like. It's another sunny day I guess, goddamn hot in here. Unfortunately, I haven't received any new info. I assume someone's still out there manning some something in the official capacity. Simoff is a world away where you can still get pizza delivered. Speaking of food, if you're near West San Saba, loot yourself up a burger at the brand new Mmm Bison. I see that you're about to open according to this stat sheet. Gotta be plenty of food left. So there's actually a, a tip right there where we should probably go somewhere where we can finally find some food. So that's gonna be at where? Uh, West San Saba, huh? Alrighty. And there should probably be some food left because um, when that shit broke down, they were about to open, so there should be some leftover food there. Stay safe and save a beefalo diaper for me, or dipper, dipper for me, not diaper. I don't think this guy wants a buffalo diaper, or maybe he does, maybe that's what he's into, who knows. Alrighty, so let's go to the job board really quickly here and get that up and running. Alrighty, so uh, everybody should be equipped though. I, I equipped everybody with weapons last episode, I want to say, so that should be already done. Ski. Now we just need to get the jobs up and running. Alright, so here's gonna be the job board itself. Um, I guess I'll read this. Um, the job board assigns and organizes all jobs across the shelter. This affects, uh, you know, this is, I actually already talked about this, right? Yeah, I mean, you can assign more than one person to a job. Obviously, the more people you assign to the job, the more faster it will get. They won't work overnight, so they, this only works during daytime. So whenever you sleep, it doesn't work. Things of that nature. And then, obviously, the better people are at certain jobs, they can do it better than other people are. I mean, you don't have to really read that. It's, you know, a little bit common knowledge, let's just say. Now, um, Elaine Martin is the chick that, you know, obviously she's uncooperative. So until we get her cooperative, she's not going to do shit in the whole part. Or she's not going to do shit for the whole um, group. So for now, she is off limits to us. Not a big problem. I'm going to go with Anita Cass because since we are going to be taking her daughter with our missions to keep us safe, I'm going to use her to kind of uh, recuperate or at least recover the fence here. So let's go um, Anita Cass. We'll do repair. 
and she needs to repair the fence. <clears throat> Remember, this is going to be kind of tricky. You could also build a fence, a wood fence, right? Um, so don't get confused. And there's also jobs here that you could do, like maintenance and machinist. So the, um, the maintenance is to actually... No, no, don't do that. This is to actually get the um, toilets working. Remember when the we finished the mission, or earlier this episode, when it gave us the whole overview of our day, it said um, working toilets. So yeah, you do want to keep the toilets up and running. Um, so what you want to do first and foremost is don't build the fence, repair it. Building the fence is going to actually start building a whole project in itself and it's going to take forever. You can actually just repair the fence that we already have. We could also repair the refrigerator. Um, we'll do that afterwards. So right now we need to get the fence up and running now. So repair fence. Um, use how many parts? Right now, 70 parts recover 70 HP. This will secure the fence. So we want to, you know, just... Um, I'm not sure how many parts. This is a really good question. Cancel for a second. Uh, let's see. This is an emergency upgrade to make some hasty repairs to the fence. Allies will work to restore the fence to its optional, optimal level of durability. Allies can restore 1 HP per mechanical skill an hour, provided they have the parts. For example, an ally with a mechanical, mechanical skill of 4 could repair 4 HP in 1 hour at a cost of 4 parts. And the effect, it restores the fence's durability. Damage wire fence, uh, it has 0. Uh, 100 HP total, so... Yeah, I'm gonna say we obviously put down all the parts required to have it because we need that fence to keep us happy. So as much as I would like to have like leftover parts to assign other things, I think the fence is gonna be the big priority right now. So by just assigning Anita, it's gonna be 30 hours. So instead of doing that, we're also going to have Davis repair the fence. And now as you can see, um, it's dropped down to 9 hours. So in 9 hours, our fence is gonna be up and running, meaning by today, it's gonna be fixed. So more than likely, more than likely by the end of the day itself will have a morale boost to the whole fact that we have our fence up and running. So Anita and Davis will remain in the back and um, fix the fence. Elaine's gonna just um, jerk it off because she can't do shit. Oh, you're gonna sleep. Must be nice. You know, we're out here trying to get food for her and she's just over here sleeping. I'm gonna put Renee Davis in the party and along with Joel and also uh, Joel and Renee in the party. <laughs> what happened there to my voice? Joel and Elaine. Joel and Renee in the party, along with Vato Loco. These people fix the repair, and that's good. So now, here's another thing you can do. You could pass time. If you pass time, it's to get a job done sooner without you going out. But obviously, we want to go out and get some uh, mission done here, right? So, um, now that you've gotten the fence repaired, uh, now you got the fence repair job at least underway, you're ready to tackle the remainder of the ruined world of... Oh, yeah, so this is going to tell you, basically... Um, we're done teaching you. It's up to you now. Some final notes. Be careful when scavenging, especially when creating noise. Guns do a lot of damage, but they can also draw unwanted attention. Be mindful of your allies and feelings are feeling. Talk to them when they're in the shelter. See what upgrades can make them feel safer and keep an eye out for special luxury items they might appreciate. Not all of your decisions as a leader will be popular, but it's never a bad idea to try to play politics to keep on people's good side. Finally, don't panic. Second, if you get confused or want more information, right, manual. That's it for the tutorial. Good luck out there, Survivor. So now we're off on our own. And I couldn't have it any other better way. So now this fence is going to be done in 9 hours. Right now it is... I'm not sure what time it is. I, I think every morning starts off at 8 a.m. if I'm right, though. So if it's 8 a.m. by 3 p.m. Or no, nuts. By 5 p.m. our fence should be up and running. So I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm just going to go out because I would like to do some scavenging right now if we can. Although maybe talking to Joel... Wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe he has a little bit of a little something to tell us. Howdy! Anything that would improve your mood? Oh, so I gotta do a voice for Joel as well, huh? <clears throat> Let's see, um, well, to be honest, some of the stuff we've been eating is kind of bland, so I love a big bottle of hot sauce to put on everything. Oh, some fancy chocolates, just so you give to people who seem to be having a rough day. I'll see what I can do. That's gonna be my southern accent. If you're southern, that's not how you talk. I, I apologize. I'm just being a. Uh, Lowly plebeian Leanderthal over here. All right, so we're we're done. Um, you know, yeah. Got some time for some questions. Uh, how did you get here? In your opinion, how bad is it out there? What would your specialties are? What do you think makes this place safer? Yeah, what do you think this place would be safer? Let's see. I guess I sure would feel a lot better if the fence was sturdier. Never much did a good job of keeping the middle school students from busting in and rearranging the letters on the bulletin board. I still don't know what's so funny about a rusty trombone. Alrighty, so he wants his a better fence. Okay, well that's gonna be built really soon, and a better fence is gonna come once we get the wooden fence up and running. But you know, first things first is getting the regular fence up and running. Um, 
today is another day, right? Let's see about talking to what's-her-face, maybe... We can talk to her now. The woman barely notices you, she eyes some point in space and occasionally sobs. Hey, can you talk to me? You were on the plane with me, weren't you? Stop your crying already, it's annoying. Let me see if, um... We can talk to her. The woman continues to sniffle and choke up, paying you a little attention. So Elaine, are you in the mood to talk? Why are you crying? You have to stop, this is not helping anyone, get a hold of yourself, goddammit. I would like to be a dick, but the problem is that I would like to have her come over to her side so we could use her. And use her in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, so let's see, why are you crying? The woman, mount, the woman mounts the word plain, then begins to sob uncontrollably. Get on your feet, crying isn't helping anyone, can you tell me what happened? Why are you crying? Now let's see, can you tell me what happened? She closes her eyes and shakes her head. I just want to help. And that's it. Tells me to fuck off. Alrighty, well I tried. So, um, fuck her. I'm not sure when we get her. Guess we just keep going forward. Maybe, you know, making the base a little bit better will cheer her up a bit. So, um, hey, out of curiosity, I'm not running here alone, am I? You are coming with me, correct? Hmm, you should be. <laughs> yeah, that should be my party, right? I don't have to run out of the fucking map here with them. So, we're gonna have the sledgehammer, which I'm happy about. I can only imagine it's not gonna have amazing aim, though, but we'll see. So let's go back into the map here. Oh, here is that place that um, the radio told us it might have some food. And then there's also Downtown Splendid. Now, this place is kind of far, and it worries me because it's only 8 a.m., so... We'll try it out, though. Why the fuck not? How long is this gonna take? This, uh, this is a description. Um, this is a preview? <laughs> sure. Do you want to start harvesting? Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, it's gonna take some time. Items collected, zero. Oh, come on. Hey, we got 11 items. It took us a little bit of time, though. We did get 11 items, that's fine. You know what? We're gonna probably leave Bison Street for next time. Let's go to the Downtown Splendid. It's a little bit closer to us, and again, we wasted too much time harvesting, so that kind of, um... Did kind of shoot myself in the foot doing that. So again, we need more midnight. And I figure that the longer you're out and the later it is, then the more zombies you run into as well, so... Um, before midnight or else it's game over. <laughs> Alrighty, so I don't think I've been down to Downtown Splendid before. So I'm not sure what to expect here. Kind of a bigger map, that's for sure. Let me move around here. City Hall's gonna be in here. We will be able to go into City Hall, so that's good. Um, some cars, so that might mean some fuel for us. And then what is this supposed to be? Can we go in there? We can. What is it, like some sort of post office? Okay. So there's a lot for us to explore here. I'm actually a little bit excited about it, but at the same time, a little bit terrified. What is this fucking thing here? What are you guys building? Alrighty. Alrighty. There's a door right here. That's locked, though. And that's also probably locked. Okay. Now then, we press forward. So Vado Loco, you do have the sledgehammer, she has a baseball bat, and Joe has a baton stick, and he also has a gun. So we'll keep everything of that in mind. Let's push forward here. Gotta be really careful. I'm here at the edge of the map, so it doesn't let me scroll anymore to the left. It's kind of annoying, honestly. Alrighty, this is opened already. Alrighty, nothing here in our sights for now. Let's rotate this here and take a look. That shadow over there kind of scared me. It looked like somebody was moving, and I was like, oh. So this is going to be a grocery store. Nice. Alrighty, so food would be good. Alrighty. I would love to be able to see in there. Come on. Come on. Alrighty. We're inside. I still see nothing. You guys um, keeping an eye out over here, too? Man, we can't be, um, you know, don't necessarily want to get cornered here. <clears throat> okay. So... So far, good, meaning that more than likely we're going to probably expect something to happen inside this room. For now, though, we will just kind of loot about. Any shelves over here that could loot? Nope. Nothing here. Looted freezer. Oh, it's already been looted. Yeah. That, tend to, that generally does tend to happen. A lot of looting when shit goes wrong in society. Let me try to loot it myself, though. Maybe there's a bit of leftovers here? Ah, uh, rotten fruit. And jar is Sure, we'll grab all this shit. Oh, here's the food that I grabbed, too. The apples. Nice. All right. So we got that. All right, here we go. It's going to be kind of risky. A little bit risky, but we'll see what happens. 
Open it up. No zombie? No zombie. Remember, before we start looting, let's make sure that the area is secure. No zombie, huh? Interesting. I was a little bit surprised here. That's good. So now we just kind of loot about. Looted storeroom shelf. All right, we got some tuna and some dry beans. Excellent. I'll grab all of that. That's some preserved food right there, my friends. Um, alrighty. Loaded storeroom shelf. Is that the other one or the same one? That seems to be the same one. Alrighty. Hate the, the rotating system can get a little bit annoying sometimes trying to find what you can loot and what you can't. Alright, this is locked. I don't want to crack that open because it will require us making noise. And I don't want to draw attention to us right now. So, good. We loaded this area. We got a few items. Nothing too crazy, but hey, it's something. Now we continue going forward. There's another store over here. A, uh, there's a diner and a bar. And then there's also the door over here to City Hall. So let's go to the diner first because the door is open, leading me to believe that there might be something in here in terms of enemies. And I'd rather us uh, cover our blind side before we move into a locked location. Okay. So right now I see nothing in here, but I could definitely change. So a bathroom and a door over here. And there's a dinner table that I can loot. So let's check this out now. Oh, sweet. So we got some sodas, some honey, some bottle of ketchup, and sugar. For a second there, I thought that was like a, you know, like a hot sauce bottle. I was going to be like, you know what? That's what Joe wanted. He was like, I could chill you some hot sauce. That's the voice that I gave Joe. <laughs> I don't know why, but it doesn't even look, it doesn't even, like, the voice doesn't even look like it would, like, you know, match his um, personality or at least features, but, you know, whatever. Uh, door is locked. And that's it, huh? So do we dare open this restroom? I don't think there's really much of a point in doing so, but maybe toilet paper? That could always be good. Uh, no toilet paper. Somebody beat us to it. Alright, well. At least we know this area is also secure. Now, we go to City Hall, I would say. Now, what do we find in City Hall? What would there be in City Hall for us to really acquire is the real question. I'm not sure. Kind of worries me. Oh, so many rooms. Okay. Very careful. We could loot a filing cabinet. Let's do that. Ah, City Hall does have a little bit of protein bars in their filing cabinets, apparently. So, you know, if you guys are ever hungry and, you know, it is a post-apocalypse scenario, go to your City Hall. You're bound to find some protein bars in the uh, filing cabinets. Why keep important documents in there when you can just kind of, um, hide some sweet snacks, right? All right. Any zombies in here? Zombies don't freak me out now, okay? Can't open any of that. No toilet paper, that's it. Okay. So that's secure. Um, do me a favor, just... Though. You, get... Renee, get out of there. I'm trying to close the door. Renee. Get your ass over here, Renee. I'm trying to close this door. Not sure why, I just... I feel really insecure when I leave doors open behind me. Might be like a real-life phobia. <laughs> you, you didn't hear that from me, though. Actually, you did. I really, really appreciate I wouldn't have mentioned that, though, now, because now you guys are aware of my weird door phobia here. If Falcon's ever around, be sure to close the doors behind him, because, you know, apparently... I'm afraid that somebody's gonna come behind me and just mug me for some reason. Not like I have much to mug, but, you know. Alright. Nothing here, huh? I mean, I'm really quite surprised by the lack of zombies. I'm not complaining. Obviously. But, it makes me worry that, you know, there's something ahead of us that's gonna be really... crazy, because, oh, this has been really mellow so far. Let's open this up here. No zombie. Alrighty. But there's an office desk for us to check out. What do we have here? We have some newspapers and some rotten fruit. Luxury item? Yes. Promotes morale. Stocked at the shelter. One of the last ones ever printed. Some people might find the answers, a few answers about the cause in this inside here, but mostly it's just something to read or wipe with. <laughs> ah. Have you guys ever wiped with anything but toilet paper? Like, you know, when you're out in the wild or something. Not, not that you live out in the wild, but, you know, say you had to go camping or something and you didn't have enough toilet paper. Um, I have not, personally. But I will say... Once I make sure this room is secure... It is? Anything to check out here? No. Okay, so we're done. This door, we can't open this door. We might as well open that up and get a shortcut to the parking lot. I haven't wiped with anything but toilet paper. Well, actually, no. I haven't wiped with, like, say, leaves or something, you know, like, if I've gone into wild camping or something and we run out of toilet paper. I haven't done that, but I have wiped with, like, hand paper, 
And, you know, it's not comfortable because it's a little bit more rougher. I'm just throwing it out there, you know. <laughs> so I can't really imagine what it would be like to actually, you know, wipe with a newspaper. But I have done it with, like, you know, just hand paper. I'm talking about the hand paper used to, like, in public, you know, restrooms. Like, when you wash your hands and there's either the blow dryer or the regular hand paper thing that you push the stick forward and, you know, that brown paper comes out. I'm talking about that rough. And that was a little bit painful, but, you know, it was either that or not wipe. So I went with the better choice here, I want to imagine. Painful, but, you know, more sanitary. Oh, zombies. Serious looter. Actually, not zombies, but just a serious looter. Undamaged serious looter. And then we have a, a tough looter. Oh, shit, he's coming to us. Okay, he's coming to us. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, they're gonna fight us. And that's understandable. I'm gonna call it an episode here, though. Find out what happens with the serious looter and the tough looter next episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I encourage you to leave a thumbs up, leave a like. The support always means a lot. Stay tuned for next episode and see what happens. I'll catch you guys next time.